Okay, thanks everybody. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm Jeff Wittick. I am the Chief Product Officer at Ampere. And I'm going to walk through some of the industry trends. I'm gonna walk through what we're doing at Ampere Computing to address some of those trends. And I'll specifically dive into what we're doing on the platform side, what we're doing with open source firmware, um, as well as what we're doing at the, at the solutions level. So this will dovetail uh, well with, uh, with Renee's keynote earlier this morning, and I'm gonna go a little bit deeper into some of those, those areas. But I'll start off in similar place to where she started with sort of framing up what it is that we see across the, the industry today. If we look at the data center landscape over the next five years, the cloud market is going to double. That's going to require at least twice the amount of compute as we have deployed today. And if we did nothing else, if you just used the existing legacy processors uh, that are x86 based and just continued building out servers in order to meet those growing compute demands, we'd end up doubling the amount of power consumed and we would end up consuming 60% more real estate in building out additional data centers. And obviously that's not sustainable. Today, data centers consume about 3% of the world's power. If we were to, to double this over the next five years, we would start getting up into high single digit percentages. That's not sustainable. Building new data centers takes a long time. It's expensive. Uh, there's already pushback in, in many areas, Amsterdam, Singapore, other places don't want to see new data centers built. So we need to find ways to live within the existing footprint, but still meet the compute need that the market demands. And so our approach at Ampere allows us to solve this problem. If you were to, instead of deploying x86 CPUs, if you were instead to deploy Ampere CPUs over the next five years, you'd actually be able to double compute, but actually bring down the total power consumption by 20%, and you would consume 30% less real estate than you do today in data center buildouts. Okay, so clearly we're in a space right now where the current path is unsustainable, we need a new path forward, and that's why at Ampere, we've developed a set of CPUs uh, that are specifically designed for cloud native and modern data center applications. And what does that mean? Why do we actually need a, a new CPU for, for the cloud? Why aren't the old CPUs sufficient? We are in the midst of a, a major transition. Uh, if you look back over the last 50 years, we spent many years in the mainframe stage. We moved to mini computers. A, a server client model persisted for a couple of decades. We're now about 10 years into this cloud era. And if you look at the way that these transitions occurred, there was an infrastructure architectural transition that was then followed by a software transition. That's happened right now with cloud, with a move towards uh, cloud native applications with a move to microservices, less monolithic applications. And then sometime around a decade in, you see a, a large shift in the underlying uh, compute architecture. That happened when we moved from RISC and IBM system machines uh, back in the 60s and 70s to x86 in the late 90s. And now we're on the verge of another one of those transitions today. And what's unique about the cloud and the way that things are deployed in the cloud as you know, the cloud demands an elastic and scalable infrastructure. It is inherently going to be heterogeneous infrastructure. It needs to be resilient and automated, and it inherently is going to be multi-tenancy with many, many microservices uh, or many, many workloads being deployed. And what that means is that we need a CPU that not only is high performance, but delivers that performance in a way that can be easily consumed by the cloud and in a way that's very, very predictable across many, many users and many, many workloads, which is very different from the way that the current legacy x86 processors actually perform today. We need very, very scalable platforms. As you'll notice with our roadmap, we're scaling the number of cores very dramatically uh, over the next couple of years. We need to match that with increased memory bandwidth per core, increased IO per core, and ensure that we have a, a very high performance and non-bottlenecked mesh that's connecting all of these, these cores together. So we need to have a very, very scalable platform to make sure that all of those cores can be utilized effectively. 
And then power efficiency is incredibly important. I think historically we've talked about power efficiency from a TCO perspective. Uh, we've looked at the OPEX savings that you get from having a more power efficient processor. Um, that, is, that certainly is nice. That's not the full story. We need power efficiency for the sustainability reasons that I mentioned earlier. Also, power efficiency is one of the key enablers for density, whether that's deploying more compute per rack or whether that means going and deploying compute in places where you just couldn't deploy high performance compute before, such as at the edge. So what have we done at Ampere to actually address those, those key needs? We've designed our processors such that they have very, very predictable performance um, across various workloads and across users. We've done this by making a number of architectural choices. Our processors are, are single-threaded. We've also optimized our processors such that the frequency can be maintained uh, across many, many users and workloads so that we don't end up seeing throttling as more and more users come onto a machine. This all results in very, very predictable performance per user and less contention between users and less noisy neighbor problems. We deliver our uh, core performance in such a way that it scales very, very linearly. As you add 50% more cores, you wanna see 50% more performance. We've achieved nearly that ideal across many, many workloads with our, with our processors. Again, that's not typical if you looked at the performance uh, on x86 processors, as you continue to bring more and more cores online, especially as you bring more and more threads online with sibling threads, you don't get that type of linear improvement in performance, and that means that people end up running CPUs at low utilization uh, in order to make sure that they don't end up uh, in a place where you suddenly start to experience some sort of uh, a cliff and uh, large tail latencies. And then we've del delivered cores that are very, very power efficient by delivering very, very power efficient cores, especially cores that are very, very power efficient in use, we're able to go to very, very high uh, core densities per SOC, which means high core densities per server, which then means high core densities per rack and at the data center level. And so that allows us to achieve uh, those very, very sustainable uh, and, and low data center footprint solutions that I mentioned that the industry needs. So in the end, we deliver great consistent performance, performance that scales linearly with the core capacity as one would like, and then more capacity in the same rack and data center footprint. Now we've talked a lot about our Ampere Ultra and our Ampere Ultra Max processors. Those are the two processors that are in production right now. Ampere Ultra has been shipping since last year. Ampere Ultra Max uh, started shipping for production last quarter. Our Ultra processor is 80 cores. Our Ultra Max processor pushes the performance even further with 128 cores. These both utilize the exact same platform. So uh, I'll show you a little bit more about uh, some of the platforms that these go into. But if you saw the keynote this morning, the Mount Jade platform that we showed that's OCP accepted, that supports both the Ultra and the Ultra Max processor. And these are DDR4, PCI Gen 4 platform. So a large amount of memory bandwidth, a lot of IO performance in, uh, in these platforms. As we look forward into the future, while Ampere Ultra and Ultra Max are delivering leadership performance, higher performance than Intel and AMD, in order for us to keep scaling things further and deliver that predictable performance across a lot of cores and to do so in a very, very power efficient way, we need to actually start to innovate in other areas. And with our next generation five nanometer processor next year, we will then introduce our own Ampere core that we built all the way from the microarchitecture up. Uh, it's completely 100% an Ampere design. That's going to allow us to continue pushing the core count up, continually optimizing for power efficiency, optimizing for area efficiency, which is also important from a design perspective, and then build in more and more features, manageability features, power management features, features that the cloud needs for security and for RAS in order to be able to effectively utilize all these cores in an inherently multi-tenant environment. Now, while we will have our own core, it's ARM ISA compliant, we're not introducing additional software complexity. All the work that we've done today in enabling software, in enabling the kernels, compilers, all of that work uh, still applies. We'll just keep building on that with our future generations of, of processors. Our next generation processor will also have increased memory bandwidth. We'll have more and more IO bandwidth on these platforms to feed the additional cores. And 
the platforms that we build for the next generation will be used for multiple generations of CPUs. We have a very, very fast cadence uh, of CPU releases. We're releasing a new CPU every single year. Uh, the reason we're doing that is because with the cadence that our customers are working at, that all of you uh, are innovating at, we need to be able to take feedback and, uh, and actually implement it in products 12 months, 18 months away, not three or four years away. So we're moving at a very, very rapid cadence. And that's meant that we've had to actually also look at new design methodologies, the way that we're uh, doing pre-silicon work, the way that we're simulating and emulating our products is, is, is very, very different and innovative. Um, as an example, on the next generation processor, uh, while we don't have silicon back yet, we've already done full emulation across a two socket system, all of the cores running Linux. So we have uh, very, very high confidence in, in what we've been building, and that allows us to keep up this really rapid pace of, of innovation. So if you look specifically uh, at some of the data around Ampere Ultra and Ultra Max and uh, see how the architectural decisions we made uh, actually do to deliver leadership performance, I mentioned that as we scale up the number of cores, we see very, very linear performance. This is a real workload here uh, that we're running that's compute bound. You can see there as you bring more and more cores or threads online, our performance scales very, very linearly up, as you would hope. This is nearly ideal within about 1%. Uh, that's not the case if you look at, say, AMD's Epic processors or uh, Intel's Xeon processors. Their processors don't end up uh, delivering the um, proportional amount of performance. As you bring on sibling threads, you see contention. The additional threads don't deliver a full core's worth of performance because they're still just sharing the exact same physical resources with the sibling thread. And then additionally, because they're very, very power constrained, those processors also need to throttle back frequency as you max out the cores and especially as you run uh, performance intensive workloads. Ampere Ultra and Ultra Max do not throttle uh, running those workloads. And so we see very, very nice predictable performance. Obviously, we have the highest number of cores in the market, 2x the number of cores that anybody else has uh, in the market. And then from a power efficiency perspective, we have extremely, uh, extremely better power per core than any other processor um, out there as well. And all this is really, really um, accentuated when you look at the usage power and the real power that's consumed for, for our processors. On an x86 processor, they typically consume very close to TDP at all times because they're very, very power constrained. So you wanna use every single watt for any kind of incremental opportunistic performance that you can get. Most of the time that opportunistic performance isn't that valuable uh, and it means you're consuming a lot of uh, extra watts for no practical purpose. Our processors consume the lowest amount of uh, power that they need at any given time, meaning that the real usage power is typically well below the thermal design power, as one should actually intend uh, in, in these processors. You should actually design for the thermal envelope, but you don't want to actually run there at all times and consume all that power. To look at workload performance. So looking at some of the, the common workloads that run in the cloud, we've really focused on these cloud native workloads that scale really, really well with core count, these throughput dominated workloads. Uh, so a couple common workloads, uh, you know, two, uh, AS256 encryption, media encoding, Nginx for web serving. You can see here really large performance leadership relative to Intel and AMD, 50 to 60% performance. Uh, lead over AMD's processors. And then you can see between Ampere Ultra and Ultra Max, you're getting about that 50, 60% performance improvement that you would expect to get with 60% more cores. So we're scaling really, really well as we bring more cores online on real life workloads. So it's not just an academic case where we get that, uh, that near optimal core scaling. And if we map this back then to the original uh, problem statement, which was um, how do we solve the problem of increasing power in space in a world where compute demands are, are increasing? If you compare um, our approach to legacy processors between now and 2025, you can see here that 58% reduction in power, 51% reduction in space in this example. Um, and then if you look at quality of service, you know, here's, a, here's an example of what we mean with that consistent performance. Another way of looking at it is what happens with your tail latency 
uh, as you, in this case, introduce more and more requests uh, on some sort of a web serving workload. With a legacy x86 processor, you start to see a large increase in latency as the number of requests increase. For us, at the equivalent number of requests, we have a 2x lead in latency. So we're able to solve those tail latency problems. And we've got the Ampere Ultra processor. It's available today uh, on a number of cloud providers today. Oracle Cloud uh, has Ampere Ultra deployed today. Uh, also, Tencent Cloud, Alibaba Cloud will have other providers coming online uh, very, very soon here. Uh, we've talked publicly about a number of digital service providers like ByteDance, um, who, uh, who have been working with us on Ampere Ultra and Ultra Max. Um, but the even more important thing to everyone here in the room is that we've made this technology available through OCP, and it's now possible to go and, and grab the reference platforms and either get started deploying or get started uh, you know, looking at the, the designs, innovating on top of those today. Open Compute, perfect place for us to, uh, to go and, and make all of this available. Um, over the last 10 years, OCP has done a lot to solve a lot of the key challenges around, around hyperscale. You know, we've seen innovations around uh, you know, battery power, 48-volt uh, racks, rack design of all types, power supplies. There's been many server reference designs. What there hasn't been is um, a, a real non-x86 uh, reference design that's gotten traction, that's really uh, been enabled across the OCP community, and we're enabling that today uh, and bringing this, this vision of these new cloud-native processors to the market. To enable this, there's a couple of initiatives that we've been working on. One, uh, DCSCM is, uh, is really important to us. The fact that it's modular, that there's compatibility across platforms, this makes for a really, really great innovation point for security and manageability at the platform level. So we've really embraced uh, DCSCM. We've been active in the, the working group through OCP. All of our next generation reference platforms will utilize DCSCM um, as well, so it'll be easy for customers to innovate, and especially innovate cross-platform with DCSCM. We've also focused on open source firmware in addition to the hardware. I think this is actually one of the key challenges that, um, you know, that have, has existed in the op open ecosystem for the last decade. There's been a, a reasonably large amount of hardware that's been made available. Uh, there's been much less open source firmware made available, which makes it hard to actually adopt the full platforms. And at Ampere, we've made our open source firmware available, our EDK2 and our open BMC packages are available. We've contributed these back as well to OCP. We've been directly enabling our ODMs with firmware. And then we've also been working with AMI on open edition. That's an opportunity for end users to go and take our open source firmware and innovate on the firmware themselves versus having to be completely reliant on another party uh, or their hardware vendor to, uh, to do that innovation for them. I think we've, we've enabled a number of options here for, for innovation. We'll continue to release more open source firmware. I think it's, it's really important that we make that available in addition to the, to the hardware. So getting to the hardware itself, uh, this was the Mount Jade platform that we showed this morning. Uh, this is OCP accepted. We've contributed back the, the board specifications. All of the design files are in there. You can go grab the Gerber files um, and, and start playing with it. So if you want to go and take this and make it the basis for another design, uh, you've got all of the assets to be able to go and do that. WeWin also has made it available through the OCP marketplace. And so you can go and, and grab it today as well. Um, we've got the OpenBMC firmware and the EDK2 UFI code available for this specific platform uh, as well, so all of the firmware you need is available. And Mount Jade's available in a bunch of different configurations. Uh, there's, this is sort of the base configuration. We've got uh, SATA versions of this. We've got a version with 24 NVMe drives. 
Um, we also have, there's one U, there's two U versions of the platform. Uh, with the riser card, there's a number of different configurations that you can take advantage of if you're using accelerators, GPUs. Um, we uh, also are using the OCP 3.0 NIC in this. So I think this is a, a really, really interesting starting point for uh, either adoption of the platform itself as is from WeWin or continue to build on it with, uh, with your own designs. If you stop by the booth, we also have a number of other platforms that we've, uh, that we've been working on with uh, our ODM partners. We've got platforms from Gigabyte in the booth. We've got platforms from Inspur. There's super micro systems uh, around. We've, uh, we've also got Foxconn um, that has built platforms for us. So we've got about 20 platforms in various form factors, various configurations from a storage uh, and accelerator perspective. So lots and lots of, uh, lots and lots of options for, uh, for you to go and, and start to experiment with. We also have a number of demos running in our booth. Uh, we are showing off our regression um, methodology. We do nightly regression runs on a number of open source pieces of software, including the operating system. Uh, you can go and see that running in the booth right now. The other interesting thing about this is that we've taken those results and they're actually available on our Ampere Solutions portal for you to look at every day as well. If you go to solutions.amperecomputing.com, you can go in there and see, say something like Drupal. Uh, you could go in and see if the current release of Drupal um, you know, whatever was, uh, was pushed out last night, go in and see if it runs on our Ampere processors. It does, uh, but you can go and check it out yourself and look across uh, many, many applications to see what the latest release was and see that it passed our regression runs each night. Uh, we've also got uh, some, some other demos. We've got an Android in the Cloud demo running there uh, that's running uh, Android applications on a server so that you can the objective here would be use a server to create a really, really dense deployment running these ARM native applications and then serve it out to, to end customers, whether it's gaming or whether it's secure applications for, for business needs. Uh, and I think if you walk around the show floor, you're gonna see a lot of ecosystem support as well. Um, there's a lot of our platforms in various people's booths, um, whether it's some of the other ODMs or the, uh, the hardware vendors uh, as well who are in the memory space or storage. Um, the other demonstration that I wanted to spend just a minute on was our AI demonstration. Uh, and the genesis of a lot of the work that we have around AI is an acquisition that we made over the summer of a company called OnSpecta. OnSpecta had developed a, uh, a really high performance software library that optimizes the uh, inference workloads for the underlying hardware. So it optimizes uh, the actual uh, data constructs, it, it optimizes the, um, the way that the uh, models run, it runs across a number of frameworks, including TensorFlow and, and PyTorch. Uh, and so when we had been working with them for about a year and a half, uh, we see multiple X uh, improvement in inference performance on our processors when using this library. From the end user perspective, it's easy to run, it's transparent to the end user, there's no work required. Um, and so you can come by the booth and, and check this out. Um, this is uh, our Ampere Inference Optimizer, AIO. So it's a cool piece of software. Um, you can go to the booth, you can see uh, us demonstrating uh, performance leadership against legacy CPUs, you know, 33% performance improvement uh, versus the best of what the legacy CPUs can, uh, can throw at our processors. So that's out there, that's available. Um, I think inferencing is an especially important space for us given the fact that as we look at cloud native applications and the way that cloud applications are deployed, inferencing will be a pervasive workload. Um, it's inherently going to be a workload that's mixed in with your databases, with your front end web, with media encoding. And uh, so we're getting exceptional performance across all of these cores on, uh, on inferencing with our Ampere AI assets. And so if we look forward uh, at the future, I showed you our roadmap for the next couple of years. Um, I talked about the fact that we have a different design approach uh, that allows us to move at a very, very rapid pace, that our core tenants of 
predictable high performance, platform scalability, power efficiency, and really to tie this all together with OCP, this really requires a holistic platform approach. And so while we're delivering CPUs into the market, working with our key partners on hardware platforms, on the open source software and firmware, on all the other open source applications and operating systems is critical to, uh, to delivering this in a really holistic manner. So I, I welcome uh, future work with everyone here. Come by the booth, grab us, and uh, I look forward to a lot of exciting things through OCP as we deliver modern cloud-native CPUs over the next decade. That's it. Thank you.